All right, the second film of the festival, Wall Street Bros. Relationship Issues. Who's going to make it out alive? Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing Fair Play. What's it about? Pretty simple premise. We have a power couple, if you want to put it that way, that work at a Wall Street firm. Stocks, investments, etc., etc. However, one of them thinks we're getting a promotion, but a twist happens. That person doesn't, and it's actually the other person in the relationship. And now it's a downhill spiral of backstabbing, hating each other, and just shit that goes really downhill really quick. So I like this film. Actually, it's a pretty solid film for what the movie was trying to portray. Even though both characters are just nasty people. And I think the director did do that for that reason. Because I watched the Q&A afterwards. Uh, first off, where she's like, I kept being in bad relationships with men. It's like, and then, and then pick the nice guys. Pick the nice guys! You know? Gotta get to, gotta get to know them. Like, there's plenty of nice people out there. So, you know, the Taylor Swift syndrome. Anyway, but is this movie good? I do think it's good. I do think it's a conspiracy theory, though. Of It's produced by the Ryan Johnson Production Company, and it sold for Netflix at $20 million. And Ryan Johnson has a huge deal at Netflix because of the Glass Onion movies. So I'm raving the conspiracy flag of how it got bought by Netflix. But let's talk about the movie as a whole. I do think it's written, it's directed, the score, as well as the look, and the acting is really good. Everyone knows their parts of what they're trying to do. Are they supposed to be douches in this scene? There are going to be douches. Are there going to be sexualized shit in this scene? There's going to be sexualized shit in this scene. Are they supposed to yell? Yes. Are they supposed to get drunk? Yes. And I'm sorry this culture of like in Wall Street are being this type of business. I would fucking hate it because I'm not a drinker. Yeah, I'll have some kind of like, you know, I'll have a beer here. I'll have like a seltzer here. I'll have like a margarita here, a mojito here. But I'm not like, let's get fucking drunk every night. And I think that also goes in the culture of these people, like, needing alcohol in their lives. And it truly is like that, and it's kind of sad as a whole. And I do think some of the characters, some of the choices they make are smart, and some of them are like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I understand that you're supposed to hate the guy more than the girl, but there are levels of, like, you are both just not meant for each other whatsoever. You are both toxic as fuck. You could call it toxic femininity. Toxic masculinity, even though I don't use those terms in everyday life, because if you go to a random person, what is toxic femininity? What is toxic masculinity? Every single person will have a different definition, just like what is a woman? It's just shit you're like, we're just fucking changing the world. It's not cool. But then let's go to the negative. I think it goes into territory where it's like, whoa, we're going a little bit extreme on this side. Let's slow it down just a bit. But I understand why the director wanted to do it. Because this isn't that type of movie where you want to like go up, up, up. And then just kind of like taper. And then maybe go downhill. So I kind of like, you can kind of hate it. Of like, okay, you're going way too far. But then you kind of step back and you think about it. And like, nah, this is a story where you kind of just need to fucking just ram it off the rail rails. Do you see that traffic circle in front of you? Fuck going around the circle. We're going to ramp over that bitch. And that move, this movie does it at the um degree. So negatives, like I said, we could go into that what the fuck territory. And I'm like, God, I don't like any of these characters. And that could be a negative because you're just like, I just want to like someone in this movie. And it's really hard to like anyone in this film. But overall, fair play. It's a smart movie. It's fun. It's witty. It could grind your gears a little bit, but I think it is supposed to. And I would say as my second viewing, it is a solid showing. So fair play. We'll receive a four out of five with futons. We was at 80%. Let's see the critics news scores gave this one. Okay. Critics a 94% with 32 of them. Critic consensus with a shirt style that at times reminiscent of the best 90s nail biting thrillers. Okay. I guess the thing about Wall Street. Fair play. What? Juxtap. What the fuck is that word? Premarital disharmony with greed and gender politics with a cutthroat finance world. Okay, gender politics. I would say it really doesn't go in gender politics in this story whatsoever. 
because if it was gender politics, it would be like, she got that job because she was a woman. But that's not true. The very beginning, the person hired that person because at 19 years old, they got something published in the Wall Street Journal. That has nothing to do with gender politics. It has something to do with her credibility in the world. So, eh, calling gender politics, I understand they're like, oh, you made it to the top because you sucked someone's dick. I mean, maybe you could call that gender politics, but as a whole, I don't know if that's the weaker argument for sure, in my opinion. 80, 94. Chase out with the blue futon. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't think it's blue Topia. You blue futonians. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. So we're at a 40% and 80% for the movies right now. So I'm a little nervous for the Sundance because there's nothing like something in the dirt where you're like, fuck yeah. These are all little conventional or just a little 